When a company holds an investment, the intent with which it holds the investment is crucial as to how the investment must be accounted for. There are three classifications to define the intent of the investor. Each classification triggers a different set of reporting standards. An investment can be considered to be a trading security, a held to maturity security, or an available for sale security. A trading security is usually a stock or bond purchased with the intent of active trading or near immediate sales. These are short-term investments subject to fluctuations in value. Trading securities are carried on the balance sheet at fair value. Suppose that Duck Company holds three trading securities as of the balance sheet date of December 31st, 2018. The value of the trading securities on December 31st exceeds their cost by $2,100. Although the securities have not yet been sold, the unrealized gains are included in earnings on the income statement and the book value of the trading securities on the balance sheet is adjusted up to their fair value. While trading securities are short-term investments for immediate sale, any long-term investment held with the intent to wait out its maturity is considered to be a held to maturity security. Held to maturity investments are reported at amortized cost. Amortized cost is the book value taking into account any premium or discount on the purchase of the security. For example, if Duck Company purchases $100 million of 10-year bonds and $98 million on December 31, 2018, the journal entries would recognize a $2 million discount. This bond investment will be carried on the balance sheet at its amortized cost, which is $100 million net of the $2 million discount. If an investment is neither a trade-in security nor a held-to-maturity security, it is considered an available for sale security. Available for sale securities are investments that are marketable and could be sold, but there is not a clear intention to sell them. The fluctuations in value of available for sale securities are captured in the form of unrealized gains or losses on the income statement as other comprehensive income. Once the asset is actually sold, the actual gain or loss amount is then recognized and any unrealized gain or loss is removed.